skaters. Not much, but I know that this thing is fun. Woo! It sound right, boys. Hey guys, now I know some of you are going to be upset that uh, this isn't the usual motorbike video, but I don't care. This is something that I've been wanting for a long time. An e-scooter. Now, why would a grown man be excited about getting an e-scooter? Well, I'll get into that a bit later. Firstly, I'll let you know how this all came about. Basically, I've been waiting a long, long time for a company to approach me about reviewing an e-scooter, but uh, it never really happened, so I thought, oh, you know, I'll get proactive about it and um, approach a company myself. What's the go-to brand in Australia when it comes to e-scooters? Murph, of course. Uh, I hit them up, said, you know, hey, I do off-road motorcycle videos. I'm really, really keen to get myself an e-scooter. How would you feel about collaborating? And straight off the bat, they were like, hey, well, um, we're just about to release the RS Outback, which is this beauty here. Um, brand new model, off-road scooter, perfect. It was just a case of being in the right place at the right time, obviously. Here it is. I've got my grubby little hands on one, and it is cool. So you can probably tell just by looking at it that this is not a kid's toy. I mean, you know, it's it's a big unit. It is, it's fairly heavy, it's tall, and it is a proper weapon. I'll just quickly go over some of the specs of this bad boy, guys, because it is impressive um, what they've packed into this package. Uh, we're talking two, it's two wheel drive, front and rear, 1000 watt motors. You know, I've seen a lot of scooters with one 500 watt motor. Uh, this has got two 1000, <laughs> it's got some go. Top speed is 40 kilometers an hour. Now, obviously in Australia, you're limited to 25 on the road. Um, you go off road on this, you can uncork it. I'll show you guys how to do that later on. It comes default, maxed out at 25. We're talking 70 to 100 kilometers of range on this thing. That's pretty impressive. Uh, max load, uh, 120 kilograms. The weight of the thing itself is 38 kilos. As I said, it's not lightweight. Um, you can't just easily pick it up and throw it in your car. You can do it. 38 kilos is doable, but it's, yeah, it's not an, an easy lift. Um, you know, you've got to have a little bit of strength. To lift this thing got 11 inch wheels with knobby tires of course front and rear disc brakes they're cable operated discs we've got two shocks uh, they coil over oil damped shocks one in the front two in the back so cool there's a large easy to read led screen the whole thing's ipx4 waterproof we've got an aluminium alloy frame 185 millimeters of ground clearance down here front and rear led lights so we've got a brake light at the back um, and also a headlight at the front. We've got a bell. We've got a bell. <laughs> now the main reason I wanted to get an e-scooter like this, guys, is you know, as you guys know, I sell my stickers online. And every time I get a sticker order, I've got to get to the post box and post them. Now it is about a half hour walk, and to be honest, I need the exercise. But now and then, it's, I just don't have the time uh, or whatever. And I usually jump on the bike and ride up there. Not ideal having to get the bike out, warm it up and head up there just for that short little trip so having something like this that you can just wheel out throw your little skid lid on and shoot up there no worries at all it's, you know it doesn't take long super convenient if you need to duck down to the shop to get some milk six pack of beer whatever this is just it's a no-brainer and as a bonus i'm thinking if i can charge this thing off my blue eddy power station and my solar panels from the sun it's essentially free transport once you've made the outlay to buy the unit and if you you know you've got a solar panel if you get yourself a blue eddy as well you've got pretty much unlimited free transport from the sun obviously it's not going to be useful for everything but for just ducking around cool free transport you can't beat it you don't need registration these things are practically maintenance free uh, your tyres and brake pads might wear out eventually, but yeah, these electric motors, no maintenance required. So here's a little bit of footage of me unboxing the unit, guys. It did The box did get a little bit damaged in transport. As you can see, it was roughed up a bit, but um, everything inside was fine. The box itself, because the unit's 38 kilos, it was really difficult to manhandle that box. Uh, it's a lot easier to obviously move the scooter around when it's set up because it's on wheels. And even just to carry the scooter itself, it's a lot easier than carrying that freaking box around. But putting it together was super easy. Just had to basically get it out of the box, put the steering stem 
mask thing up, attach the handlebars. You've got eight screws to attach that. Um, just got to make sure all the cables are around to the front. I did stuff that up initially, but I got it right in the end. And once you've got the handlebars on, basically um, you've got the optional rear fender. It's just a little thing to stop water flicking up on you, I suppose. Um, two bolts to put that on. So obviously we do have a little kickstand here as well, super handy. I'll quickly show you guys how to fold this down to store it or put it in the boot of your car or whatever. You've got this um, locking knob here at the front, just simply undo that. And then this bit just folds down. I don't know if you can see that there, but um, there's a little catch here at the back. That just folds up and it's locked in and then you can basically oh, carry it, lift it, but yeah. Oh, as I said, she's pretty heavy guys with that big battery in there and those two big motors. But yeah, super easy. To remove the battery, we've got, we've got two quick access bolts in the top here. Just undo those and you can get to the battery compartment underneath. The suspension is pretty stiff on this thing, but um, it, yeah, it is designed to, as I said, carry up to 120 kilos. I'm only about 75, so it does soak up a lot of the big hits. Um, you can jump this thing off the gutters, no worries at all, trust me on that. But yeah, it is pretty bumpy on rough ground with me on it. Anyway, we'll uh, quickly have a look at the functions and controls on the handlebars. So on the left side, firstly, we have the bell here, of course. We have the rear disc brake there. You got your function control buttons and power button there. On the right hand side we have the front brake and of course the throttle. So it's a thumb controlled throttle. Got nice big hand grips there, they're quite comfortable. And in the middle we've got the, the big LED panel. So to turn it on, we hold down the power button of course. Make some noise. Screen comes on. Function button over here will change your different speeds. So that's the slowest there, you go to D, that's uh, the middle speed, and then the red D is high speed. So I've obviously got battery meter here, and speed, current speed there. So as you can see here, we've got a nice rubbery deck, it's got some nice grip on it. Right up to the back there. It's definitely a solidly, you know, well built unit. Anyway, obviously the next thing to do is to get out on this thing and show you guys how well it goes, how much fun it is, and how useful it can be. No shit like, in the average week I get probably half a dozen to a dozen sticker orders. This week, not a one. So, I'm just gonna have to take the scooter out and pretend like I'm posting stickers. <laughs> anyway, firstly we need a few essentials before you go scooting. 17 GoPros attached to it, and yourself pair of Chuck Taylors and a hat on backwards actually you can't really do that here you need to wear a helmet so uh, it's good that it is all right hey guys as I think I mentioned I'm not a scooter expert this is the first the only scooter I've ever had but I can tell you what I think of it and so far I'm pretty impressed pretty much the only complaint I would have so far is that the suspension does feel a little bit bumpy uh, for someone of my weight and you can't really adjust it I don't think but other than that you know it's a scooter what do you expect it goes fast it goes up hills pretty quick but the brakes are really good the brakes are awesome Throttle, the thumb throttle is a little bit switchy, especially on the high power setting. So like even on the grass, it just powers through, not worries at all. Now here in Queensland, we do have to stick to 12 k's per hour on the footpath, sidewalk. Uh oh, magpie. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Full speed. <laughs> Hopefully the camera's picking that up.
can easily do your 25 kilometres an hour on the road. No worries. Like the grassy incline like this, the grass is pretty thick. And that's a bit of a hill. Gets up at no worries. Still doing 20. As a bit of a bonus, I've enlisted the help of my little nephew here. Well, he's a big nephew now. Lincoln. How are you? He's a professional scooter rider, this fella. Oh, yeah. Just say yeah. you are, even yeah. if you're not. Yep, yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. What do you think? Pretty good. Did you buy one? I'm gonna steal this one off you. Alright guys, obviously this little skater is a ton of fun. I've had a blast on it so far. Merth have kindly given us a 10% discount code guys if you're interested in one of these or any of the other scooters in their range. Pretty sure they all come with free shipping as well. But yeah, so far I can't fault the thing really. It's held up to a bit of abuse. So far I am planning on taking it out into the trails at some point in the forest. Um, at the moment I don't really have any way of getting it out there. I've sort of had a look at sticking it on the back of the bike to take it out there, but yeah, it's a bit too heavy and bulky for that. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video, a little bit of something different. One other thing I thought was worth mentioning real quick is this um, particular model of scooter doesn't have any kind of key to, you know, operate it. Now, obviously with something this size, anyone can pick it up and throw it in the boot of their car and nick off with it if they want to and this one's not really designed for riding around in town but some of them do have a key so you can't just walk up press the button and ride off with it like you can with this one there's no key so yeah i thought it was worth mentioning if you do want to take this one down to the shops and duck into woolies or whatever you will probably need to bring a bike lock or something just to chain it up in case you come back out of the shop and it's gone <laughs> so yeah something to be aware of guys one thing left to check out is can i charge it with my blue eddy on the solar so we'll do that now there's a fair bit of sunshine out there get the solar panels out hook up the blue eddy see how we go so we've got the solar panel out there. Uh, there's a 120 watt solar panel, getting about 114 watts in at the moment. This is the charger that comes with the um, scooter. So we'll plug that in, the AC. The other end simply plugs in under this flat here. A little port here with the cover on it. It'll only go in one way, so you gotta make sure you got it the right way around. There we go, it's plugged in. Turn on the uh, AC. Not sure if you can see that there, but we're drawing about 166 watts to charge. So obviously the solar is not going to be able to keep up with it fully. But as long as this is charged and you're getting good sun in there, I think it'll just about 
um, charge this, no worries, as long as it's not dead flat. But yeah, you have to keep an eye on that. Don't want to let this get too low, but yeah, it'll charge this, no worries at all. They say this thing takes nine to 10 hours for a full charge, so uh, keep that in mind if you want to charge it you know, all the way from dead empty to full. Anyway, there you have it guys, the Mirth RS Outback. Awesome little unit. Hang around if you want to see um, how to change the settings on the controls. Um, to uncork the speed and everything you can turn on and off the cruise control and a few other things so cool so to access the settings we need to power it on first obviously then hold down both these buttons so we get p0 up on the screen I hit the on off button there to change that particular setting now p0 is kilometers or miles per hour if i push the function button it'll switch between kilometers and miles i'll leave that on kilometers per hour hit the power button to store that Hit the function button to change up to P1. P1 is cruise control, so you can turn cruise control on or off. Obviously, um, if you're putting along at a constant speed, it'll beep at you and automatically go into cruise control mode, so you won't have to keep the throttle on. Personally, I prefer to turn that off, but that's a matter of um, personal taste. P2 is basically um, whether or not you have to actually kick off to get moving. Setting P2 to zero, it will actually take off by itself once you hit the throttle, you don't have to kick off with your feet first. By default, that P2 setting is set to on, so, and I didn't realize that when I first got the scooter, I thought it was broken because it wouldn't go when I was hitting the throttle, but um, then I finally figured out that you've actually got to push off with your foot, get rolling, and then it'll power on. So I turned that off because I like to be able to just jump on it and go. Now P3, you go in and you can actually change whether or not you use the front wheel to drive, the back wheel to drive, or both, D is both. So I'll leave it on both. You can obviously get way more power with both wheels um, driving. Now P4 is actually a hidden setting. That unlocks the full speed of this unit. So you actually have to access it a little bit different to, um, to those ones. You, what we do is go into P0, then we click up to P1, then we hold down or we grab the front brake and hold down the function button at the same time. That'll give us P4. Now we hit the function button and you can see here you can set it to 20, 25, 40 or full fast I guess that stands for. But I mean it basically can only go 40 kilometers an hour anyway, it's limited there. But let me tell you, 40 kilometers an hour on something this size, <laughs> it feels a lot faster and it's pretty scary. Um, I don't know how these guys do like 60 to 80 k's an hour on the freaking motorway on these things. Nah.